knowing God the Father and knowing who Jesus is doesn't have to start when we get to heaven. It can actually start right now. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Deb if you are new here and I just want to invite you to join the family as we learn about Christ and we learn about growing in Christ and just depending on Him throughout our everyday life. I post every week and if you're interested in this kind of content, I implore you to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you like these kind of topics and would like to see more of them. Delighting in the Lord is such a special topic that I like to speak about because it, it goes so deep into knowing who we are and knowing who Jesus is. So I'd like to start off reading in Psalm 37, 4 that says, Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. And so many times when we read this verse, we tend to focus on the second half of that verse, which is He will give you the desires of your heart. But we kind of neglect the delighting in the Lord part. And so that's what I want to talk about today, what, what delighting in the Lord means and how it personally has changed my life and has fulfilled me. So to start off, delight in the dictionary means to please someone greatly or to find pleasure in happiness, joy, joyfulness. And as I was doing my research and looking more into this word delight, I found that delight in the Hebrew means to be soft, to be tender, to lean into, to incline toward. And I found that so beautiful because it completely changed how I read this verse. Because like I mentioned before, many times we seek God to give us things. And it's not a bad thing. I want to encourage you that if you are seeking any sort of thing, maybe marriage, maybe a family, maybe a, a stable career, those are good things. They're not bad things in themselves. But when we place that as the priority of our life and make it like an idol or we, where we do anything to get those things, in place of the pursuit of knowing Jesus, that's where we can get a little off, off track. So I want to read some verses that, that more explains about this concept of delighting in the Lord. And delighting in the Lord isn't just about feeling joy, isn't just about feeling happiness, because as I'm about to read James, the brother of Jesus, he says this in chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. He says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And friends, so this is so important because when you're facing trials, when you're, when you're being afflicted, when you're going through storms in life, our instant reaction isn't to be joyful about them. If you're like me, most times I wonder why is this happening to me? Or, you know, I get upset or frustrated or act out in anger or, you know, sulk in my own pity. But James is telling us to consider it pure joy when we face these trials. And he tells us why. Because it tests our faith and it produces perseverance. And when perseverance finishes its work, we are mature. We are complete. We lack nothing. And that is what it means to delight in the Lord. Delighting in the Lord brings us to a level of spiritual maturity that we are no longer dependent on material things to satisfy our deepest longings. And the beautiful thing about this verse is that 
The second half says that God will give you the desires of your heart. Who knows you more than you know yourself? God, your creator. He is the one that created you. He is the one who knew you and knit you in your mother's womb. So he knows exactly what you need. And it is in his mercy that as we delight in him, he completely fulfills the, the root of what we really need. Not temporary pleasures, not material wealth, not worldly power, not finding your joy in your kids, in your jobs. And let me tell you again, there is no problem with finding joy in these things. There's no problem with delighting yourself in these things because God wants us to enjoy our lives. We are not here to just live in suffering and you know, struggle daily through life. God has given us Jesus Christ who has overcome the world. And Jesus tells us not to be afraid, not to worry, to take heart because he has already overcome the world. So we can live in this world even though it is fallen, even though it is marred by sin. We can still live joyful lives. We can still live fruitful lives because we delight in the Lord. And I wanna continue unpacking this because it is so important. Because I know as Christians, when we first get saved and we have salvation and we pray the prayer of salvation and we are going to heaven if we die today, we only stay stuck at that moment. And as we walk along, as the years go by, as the days go by and things, the excitement of joining the family of Christ dies down. Then we go back to the mundane task of every day and we wonder and we ask, why am I not fulfilled? Why am I not happy? Why am I not seeing all the blessings of God in my life? And friends, the major problem is that we don't know the God who we serve. We don't know the God who we came into relationship with. And so we have to start off with knowing God. And how do we know God? We dive into his word. That's where we know who he is. We know his thoughts and desires toward us. We know the plans that he has for this life and for eternity. And we can see his heart and his compassion and mercy time and time again as we read the stories in the Old Testament, as we see the fulfillment in Jesus and the stories and the miracles and signs and wonders that followed him, we get to know God. And that is the most important aspect of the Christian life is that we come into a knowledge of who God is and we grow in this awareness of this relationship, this beautiful partnership that we have with cr the creator, the God of heaven and earth, the one who made everything that we see, the one who made us. And so as we look at the full context of Psalm 37, we have to read the verses before and after to fully grasp what the author was intending for us to understand. And we see as we look that there are themes of envy and there are themes of contentment. And the psalmist speaks about the ultimate punishment of the wicked and that as righteous people as people who have been saved by the grace of god we don't have to envy those those people that seem to be enjoying life that seem to be successful and getting all the things that you desire friends that is not the ultimate goal when we delight ourselves in the lord he becomes our desire he becomes our contentment. We no longer have to seek out other things to fulfill those desires because he fulfills them. If we look at other verses in the Bible, like Matthew 6, that says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. If we look at Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 to 13, Paul shows us that material wealth and worldly satisfaction will never 
satisfy us. Taking pleasure in Him will satisfy our deepest longings. When you delight in God, He becomes your desire. And we go back to what James says, that we become mature and we become complete, lacking nothing. I don't know about you, but I want to be that mature Christian. I want to be in that place where I know that I am complete, that I know that I am not lacking anything. And friends, this isn't an easy task. We are inundated with the world's agenda. We are surrounded by the world and its sinful desires. Jesus also reminds us in Matthew 5, 6, where he says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Friends, our hearts need to be transformed first before anything. We are made in the image of God and we have those same attributes, some that are communicable and some that are incommunicable, which means that we can communicate some of the aspects of God. For example, He is love. We can show love. We can be loving to other people. That's an attribute that we can replicate. We can be kind. God is kind. We can be merciful to people that have wronged us. But the incommunicable attributes are that God is eternal, that God is a, is a transcendent God, that He is omnipotent, that He is everywhere, that He is all-knowing, He is omniscient. Those are the things that we can't replicate because we are in this sinful body. We are marred by sin and we were born into sin. But it is so amazing that we are made in the image of God to reflect Him on this earth, to reflect light in the midst of darkness. And I love what it says in Jeremiah chapter 9, 23 to 24. It talks about boasting and so many times we can boast in our accomplishments we can boast in our families we can boast in our careers we can boast in the things that we've achieved in this world but listen here because he tells us what we truly should boast in and this is what the lord says here he says the wise person should not boast in his wisdom the strong should not boast in his strength the wealthy should not boast in his wealth but the one who boasts should boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord showing faithful love, justice and righteousness on the earth, for I delight in these things. This reminds me of Paul who wrote most of the New Testament. He was a devout Jew. He was a intellectual man. And he also speaks about boasting in these things that he now considers trash. He considers dung in one version. That knowing Christ surpasses any accomplishment that he could have done on his own. And that's Paul. Paul is a significant character of the Bible. And he wants to know the Lord more. Even after his conversion, his pursuit was knowing who God was, knowing who Christ was. And that's what changed him. And that's what will change you. If you are in a place where you feel stuck, where you don't, you don't understand God, you don't see how God is moving and working in your life, my first tip for you is to start reading the word. Start diving into the Bible and knowing who God is through these stories, knowing who Jesus is. You can start in the Gospels and, and reading about the life of Jesus and what he did here on earth. And also Proverbs is a great book uh, that speaks about wisdom and speaks about every aspect of life that we can encounter. I am a testimony of this, delighting myself in the Lord. If I did not delight myself in the Lord, I cannot be content. I cannot be fulfilled as a single mom right now. I cannot be a joyful mother that is pleased in raising my son alongside with the village, my family that surrounds us. If I did not delight myself in the Lord, I would be lost. I would be sunken in misery and pity and sadness. 
but because I've delighted myself in the Lord, I can face seemingly tough circumstances and still be happy and still have hope and still know that God is working for me, that God is working behind the scenes, but most importantly that he's working inside my heart, that the Holy Spirit is transforming me to the image of Christ and conforming me to his image. Friends, I know it isn't easy and I know there's times that the world seems like it's crashing down. But in Psalms, it says that the one who is planted is like a tree that is bearing fruit throughout all seasons. I don't know about you, but I wanna be that tree that is rooted in the word of Christ, that is rooted in Christ himself and abiding in him. That whatever season I may face, whatever ups and downs we may go through in this life, we can still be producing fruit and we can still be providing shelter for those that come to us, for those that are around us that are suffering, for those that are in need of a hopeful word. We can go back and say, I've delighted myself in the Lord and I've rooted myself in this truth that I can then encourage you and build your faith up and tell you that God is there, that God is for you, that he is not against you, that he has a beautiful plan and purpose for your life, and that God will fulfill every desire of your heart. And you know, the Bible also speaks about sinful desires and that God is not a God who tempts us. And so when we think that we are suffering and God is punishing us, you know, to get us to learn something, that is not who the Bible says God is. God is a God of compassion. He is a God of mercy, of faithful love. And we see it time and time again in the Old Testament. The Israelites are a perfect example to encourage you that God will not abandon you, that God will not forsake you. If you think you've done too many mistakes, that you've gone far way out of reach out of God's hand, I am here to encourage you that you are right where you need to be, that God forgives your every mistake, that you are no longer condemned if you are in Christ. And I love in the Old Testament where the Israelites would go through a tough period of time or they'd go through a struggle or a tough circumstance and when they recalled, when they remembered what God had done for them, it pushes them to worship. It gets them down to their face. And so I want to encourage you before you fall into a pit of despair, go back and think back of how God has been for you in your life how he has never left you alone, how his finger, how his hand has been weaving your life story into a complete perfect story, to a redemptive story. I know for me, I keep a journal and I write and you know, I, I, I'm not faithfully writing every day, but I always write about distinct moments in my life where I saw God's hand or where I was facing something really difficult. And then in those days when I feel a little down, when I feel like I don't see God moving in my life, I go back and I remember. I remember what he did for me then and I know that he is a all-powerful God that will continue to do the work in my life now. So I encourage you to write down what God speaks to you, to journal with him, to talk to him, to cultivate a life of prayer. And so we delight in the Lord, number one, by knowing God. Number two, we delight in the Lord by loving his word. When we see that his word is what brings true joy, that following his commands, that living in his goodness, that doing good and trusting in God, that brings delight to us. That's what brings true pleasures in our life. Think about it, when you do something good for someone, 
when you fulfill someone's need, when you help somebody out financially, when you do those things, you are practicing God's character. You are living out in the fruitfulness that he wants you to live by. Now, I'm not saying that we are perfect people and that our goodness is what saves us, what earns God's love for us. No, it is not our goodness. It is only through Jesus Christ that we are here, that we have been redeemed, that we are being sanctified through the Holy Spirit. It is by grace alone and faith alone that we believe that we serve an eternal Father and that we will one day be in His presence. And so, I just want to encourage you that in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. That as you dive in, as you seek God, as you seek to know Him, and let that be your number one desire. And even if it's not right now, even if right now you're you're thinking, how can God fulfill my every desire when my circumstances are so bad right now, or things are just crumbling down in my surroundings? Friend, I promise you that delighting in the Lord will give you the full contentment that you are seeking for. I've known it for my own life. I've been through so many ups and downs in this journey. I can tell you with full assurance and with full confidence that God will wrap you in his love and that he will fulfill your every desire and that he will be your contentment and that you will no longer seek the things of this world but you will want to seek his faith and live out the life that he has called you to live. Friends, thank you so much for joining me in this video today and I hope this was encouraging to you and I hope that as you mature and grow in the knowledge of Christ that you become fulfilled and that you become anchored in the Word of God and His truth. See you guys in my next video.